Hey, fifth grade, how's it going? Mr. Joseph here. Happy Tuesday, October 13th, 2020. Today we're going to continue to investigate quadrilaterals and explore the properties of angles and parallelograms. So what you're going to need, boys and girls, is page 116 inside of your book 5A. All right. Before we get to book 5A, page 116, I just want to remind you that if you did not watch the video from last time, please do so, okay? That video is going to be in the notes below, and it was from October 6th. We learned a little bit more about angle measurements of triangles, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, okay? What I'd like you to do is understand that every time you see this symbol that you need to pause the video and do the problem on your own. Mr. Joseph is going to do a few of the problems, but I really want you to try to do them on your own, okay? Let's look at some vocabulary that we're going to be looking at today. The first vocabulary word is square, square, rectangle, parallelogram. Repeat these words after me, parallelogram, quadrilateral, angles, Equilateral triangle, parallel, congruent, adjacent, and the last word, trapezoid. Okay, those might be new words for you, so it's important that we understand what those words are. You can see that the word parallel is actually in the word parallelogram. And we're gonna be looking at those types of shapes today, all right, four-sided shapes. Remember, boys and girls, that a four-sided shape can be considered a quadrilateral, okay? Quad means four in English and Spanish, and lateral is just having to do with those sides, right? So let's look at a couple of examples. We have, for example, a rectangle, a square, a rhombus, we also have a parallelogram, a trapezoid, and a kite. Okay, those are all different examples of quadrilaterals and parallelograms. A parallelogram, boys and girls, is a shape with opposite sides, parallel, and equal. So for example, these two sides are not only equal, but they're also parallel, as well as these two sides. Okay, that's different from a trapezoid where we have these two sides which are parallel but they're not equal. This one's smaller than this one. And if we look at this, for example, this side and this side are parallel and equal, and these two sides are also parallel and equal. With a square, all four of the sides are parallel, equal, and the angles are 90 degrees, just like a rectangle. Versus a rhombus, no 90 degree angles. We do have parallel sides. Okay, and they're all the same. All those sides are exactly the same. So let's go ahead and recognize and name these four sided shapes. Remember, every time you see this symbol, I want you to pause the video and try the question on your own. Let's go to page 116. The question says Identify each type of four sided figure. It says AB and DC and DC is equal to BC. So this side and this side are equal, and this side are this and this side are equal. What type of shape is that? Is that a rectangle, square, rhombus, parallelogram, trapezoid, or kite? Well, if you didn't know, that would be a rectangle. Okay, the answer is actually rectangle. And why is that? Well, boys and girls, we know that a square is a rectangle. Okay, now if you didn't know why, let's go to the next slide. It says a square is a rectangle. All right, and that's because a square is also a parallelogram whose sides intersect at 90 degrees with those angles. Therefore, all its sides are congruent. We'll get into that a little bit later on. A rectangle is a square when both pairs of opposite sides are the same length. This means that a square is a specialized case of rectangle and it indeed is a rectangle. So let's look at those examples. If we take a look at this square right here, we can actually fit not only one square inside of the rectangle, but two. 
So technically, a square is a special type of rectangle, okay? We can put that inside of there, not once, but twice, okay? So every square is a rectangle, but every rectangle is not a square. It's like saying that every sandwich has bread, but not every sandwich is a hamburger, right? Let's look at the next problem. The next problem on page 116 says that PQ is parallel with SR, and SR is parallel with QR. PQ and QR are equal to SR, which is equal to SP. What is this shape? And then take a look at letter C. What is this shape? STUV is a what? All right, letter B is a rhombus. You should have picked that one because a rhombus has all the equal sides and opposite sides are parallel. So what's letter C? What is that shape, letter C? Letter C is a trapezoid. It's a trapezoid, boys and girls, because, let me just show you an example of a trapezoid right over here, two sides are parallel. So if we look at that example, this side, these two sides are parallel, but these two are not. Okay, so only these two sides are parallel. So make sure you write the answers rhombus and trapezoid on page 116. Pause the video if you need more time. All right, let's take a look at the next example on page 117. What is this shape? Is it a square, rectangle, trapezoid? What type? Well, I know that all of these sides are the same because it says that these sides are all equal. So that must be a square. Figure K, N, M, L is a square. Page 117, letter E. What type of shape is this? I know that E, F, and H, G are parallel. So this side and this side are both parallel. And E, F, and HG are also both parallel. So what type of shape is that? It's a parallelogram because we have two sets of parallel sides. This is not a square, this is not a rectangle, it's not a trapezoid, it's called a parallelogram. Okay, a square and a rectangle are parallelograms, but this is a specific parallelogram. Letter F, what type of shape is this? Well, if you look back at our examples, here are all of our examples. So what type of shape is letter F? Letter F is a trapezoid. Good, because this side and this side are parallel, but these two sides are not parallel. Great job, boys and girls. Thanks for participating. Now what we're going to do is we're going to measure the angles of some four-sided shapes. This is different than the sides. Remember, we were looking at the sides in these examples. Now we're going to look at the angles. So let's take a look at the first example on page 118. The directions say, these parallelograms are not drawn to scale. Find the unknown angle measures. So what could we do to try to find the angle measurements of these examples? Well, there's something very important that you need to know. Opposite sides are parallel when we have a parallelogram. So this and this are both parallel, and so are these. They're also of equal length. So xy is the same as wz. And this angle right here, z, is the same length, or the same measurement of x, as well as y is the same measurement as w. Okay, so these two are the same measurement, and these two are also the same measurement. Also y and z added up equal 180. That's our magic number. So do x and y. Those both added up equal 180. Okay. In fact, all of these angles, so this, these two, and then these two, and these two, and these two, all add up to 180. So you need to remember that magic number, which is 180 degrees. So let's go back to our problem on page 118. Pause the video and see if you can find out what the angle measurements are, A and B.
All right, letter A is 100, I'm sorry, 55 degrees, right? These both are the same measurement. So letter A right here is also 55 degrees. What about letter B? Well, I know that this angle plus this angle are going to equal 180. So I need to subtract 180 minus 75. Let's do that on the screen right here. We have 180 total. So this one and this one add up to 180. I can subtract 75. And I'm going to come up with 105 degrees. Okay. So I subtracted 75 from 180. And now I'm going to come up with 105 degrees. Let's check our answer to see if that one's correct. Remember, these two angles added together equal 180. So I know that this is 75 degrees plus 105 degrees equals 180. Okay, so this angle right here, just like we found out before, is 105 degrees. Check your answer to make sure that it's okay. Let's go to the next problem. On page 118, you're supposed to find the angle measurement of letter C and angle D. Pause the video and try to see if you can do this on your own. All right, remember our magic number 180. Let's check our answers. I know, boys and girls, that angle C is the same as the other angle on the opposite side. So these two angles both add up to 125 each. What about letter D? How do we figure that out? Well, again, these are opposite internal angles. So both of them add up to the same number, 110 degrees. Let's go to page 119, letter E. If I know that this angle is 80 degrees, what would this angle be? Pause the video and see if you can do this on your own. All right, boys and girls, my magic number is 180. I know that because this angle plus this angle equal 180 together. The total is 180, so I'm going to subtract the angle measurement that I already know, which is 80, 80 minus 80 is 0, and 100 minus 0 is 100. So this angle measurement is going to be 100 degrees. Let's check our answer to see if we're correct. So let's check that angle measurement to see if we were correct. Uh, which problem am I on? Let's just check that. All right, 180 minus 80 equals 100. So we were correct. What about letter F? Well, letter F is the same as the opposite angle. So it should be 135. Check your answers on page 119 to make sure that they're correct. Let's finish off this page. Page 119, letter G, is a little bit more complicated. How would you try to figure out this angle measurement, angle G? Well, if I know that this is 142, then this must also be 142. And 142 plus this angle measurement must equal 180. That's my magic number. Okay, so let's check it out. If we know, boys and girls, that G is equal to 180 minus 142, all we have to do is subtract 18 to get 20 degrees. What I did, let me just show you on the board, is I took 180, which is this angle, plus these two angles, right? Remember, when we have a parallelogram, this angle plus this angle are always going to equal 180 degrees. So let's take 180 minus 142. 38 degrees. So that is these two together. 
Now what I need to do is take 38 degrees and then subtract the angle measurement that I already know, which is 18. 8 minus 8 is 0, and 3 minus 1 is 2. So my angle measurement for G is 20 degrees. Okay? If I want to add that up to make sure that I'm correct, what I can do is I can add all my angle measurements together. For example, I could add this angle measurement plus this angle measurement, plus the G that we just found, 20, to see if I was correct. Let's find out. It needs to add up to 180. So 142 plus 18 plus 20 equals 180. That's my total. All right. I think we're going to come to the next problem next time. Let me just see if we have time. Let's do this last problem on page 119, OK? The last problem on page 119 uh, tells us that we need to find the angle measurement of H, okay? So H, boys and girls, is going to be added up with this angle right here and this one to get 180. So this angle plus this angle plus this angle all equal 180 total. So how do we figure out H? Well, what we could do is we could understand that this triangle, not only does it add up to 180, those two angles, but it's also an equilateral triangle. Remember that equilateral triangles all have 60 degrees as their three angle measurements. So we would take 180 minus 60 minus 60 to come up with 60 degrees. So once more, what we did was we took our total 180 degrees, which is this one, and this one, and this one, we subtracted 60. In other words, we subtracted this angle right here, and then we subtracted another 60, this angle right here, to get 60 degrees. In other words, H, our last angle measurement. Okay, so H, the measurement of angle H equals 60 degrees. All right, that's where we're going to end the video for today, boys and girls. We will get to the other problems on page 119. If you'd like, you can check out the Brain Pop video, which is going to be in the link below. And you can also check out the Kahoot if you have time. All right, I will send that link in the video notes. You can check that out and understand a little bit more about this topic. Um, click through that to see if you want to understand that a little bit more. Um, just because these are really great ways to understand how to find the angle measurement of these three and four sided figures. So I'll leave the link to the Brain Pop as well as the Kahoot. If you guys have time, you can play that. Um, otherwise, check your answers on pages uh, 116, 117. 118 and 119. All right. Next time, boys and girls, we're going to be doing a checkup just so you guys understand this topic a little bit better. Here are just a, a little preview of what you're going to need to know. So remember how to use a protractor. Remember also what an isosceles triangle is, as well as a scalene and a uh, equilateral triangle. So make sure you remember all those things from the previous weeks. Okay, boys and girls, thanks for paying attention today, and we will see you guys next time.